Hey everybody, Jim McLaren back again, and this is essentially a part two to the video I uh, did a little while ago on integrating the iPad into Apple MainStage. Uh, what I wanted to do this time was I just wanted to sort of increase the amount of uh, iOS power going on, so I decided to add another iPad. And uh, let me just show you the rig I've got going on. Unfortunately, with the uh, two iPads and my iPhone recording the audio, I don't have any more cameras, so I'm going to have to do this separately. For this setup, I'm going to be using three different keyboards. Now at the top, I have an Alesis Micron. In the middle, an old, with a broken key, Yamaha AN1X. And at the bottom, a M-Audio Axiom 61. And all of these three keyboards are just going to be sending MIDI information. I'm not going to be using any of the internal sounds. The idea is that I'm going to have three different MIDI keyboards controlling three different iOS sounds. The Alesis Micron and the Yamaha AN1X are both being connected via MIDI into this Roland UM2 MIDI interface, which then gets sent via USB to my MacBook Pro. The big difference between this tutorial and the last tutorial uh, is adding an iPad, but also instead of using wired MIDI, I'm going to be using wireless MIDI but I'm creating a network with my MacBook Pro. So uh, what I've done is I've created an ad hoc network. And the way to do this is if you click on the Wi-Fi button up here, there's an option to create a network. And at that point, I've created a network just called Jim's MacBook Pro. And then I would go into any of these iOS devices uh, turn on airplane mode just because it's it's a little bit more uh, stable that way and then I have to turn the Wi-Fi back on and then connect to this ad hoc network that I've made and both iPads are are doing this at the moment so having created that I then have to go into my audio MIDI settings so I go to the audio MIDI setup on session one I would connect my iPad Air which Unfortunately, is somehow called Jim's iPad 2. Uh, you hit the connect button and it appears right here. And that becomes network session one as a MIDI output. And then I just create by hitting this plus key another session called session two. And then I add Jim McLaren's iPad 2 2, which is my iPad mini. I would like to change the names of those somehow, but it doesn't seem to stick. That creates session two, which then, when you go into any program that requires uh, MIDI outputs, you have session one network, session two network. Okay, so um, you can see on this main stage layout, I've got three keyboards, and one keyboard is representative of the Axiom, which is this one, and one keyboard is representative of the Yamaha keyboard, and then the other one is the Alesis keyboard. Each of these, if I click on this keyboard, you can see is assigned to the MIDI port in the Roland UM2 and then the Axiom itself, because it's USB, just plugs right in. Ideally, you would probably want to use three MIDI controllers that actually have USB on them, rather than having to use the uh, five pin connectors. Okay, so now that they're all hooked up, I've got a patch here called iPad Air. and this one is going to a Mellotron. Now, I haven't actually used Audio Bus this time. I wanted to try to just open all three apps just, you know, without Audio Bus. So if I look here, I've got, besides my settings, I've got Animoog, the Mellotron, and Thor. So as in my previous tutorial, I set each of the outputs of these three uh, external instruments. So yeah, the way to do this is to just create an external instrument. And that's where you set which keyboard it's going to be using and which output you're going to be using. So these are all going to session one. Now session one is the iPad Air. Channel one is the Mellotron. And the way to change the Mellotron settings, I realized later, you actually have to go into the settings. So you go into the M3000 HD, and then you tell it which MIDI channel to use. So it's not inside the app. So at this point, I'm going to start recording 
the audio from these into my iPhone uh, so that I can get some good sound here and there's your Mellotron. Let's make sure the Animoog is working. Sounds good. And we'll go into Thor as well. Sounds like my Thor keyboard is actually triggering the other app. That doesn't matter. I'm not going to be using the iPad itself to, uh, to control anything. So, Thor should be controlled by my Axiom. And I'm going to hit my Axiom right now. Sounds good. Um, on my Yamaha should be triggering the Mellotron. And I believe... Sounds good. And if I hop up to the Alesis Micron, we should be hitting the Animoog. Sounds good to me. Okay, so then I can start playing if I want. Turn the volume up a bit. Alright, sounds good. So what I did then was I created a patch called iPad Mini. I have got a couple of synths open as well. I have Arctic Keys, Magellan, and Nave. And I wanted to try to just use six completely different sounds, or uh, apps in this case. So on Arctic Keys, I I've set this patch up the same way. In this case, the Axiom will trigger Arctic Keys on channel one. The, uh, so let's hear that and see if that works. Sounds good. The Yamaha will be triggering Magellan on channel 2. Let's just open that up, double check everything. Looks good. And Nave will be used on the Micron. Obviously that's a Nave sound. Sounds pretty indicative of that app. Okay, uh, and I should say uh, it's the only difficulty in this case is often making sure that each of the apps is using the correct interface as well as on the correct MIDI channel. So that takes a little bit of time to set up. Um, I don't think it would be any different in audio bus, but uh, anyway, it works really well. It takes a bit of time to set up. Uh, I haven't done any layering because uh, I'm using small keyboards here, so the layering uh, the layering could work, but the splitting might be a little bit difficult. If I was using an 88-note keyboard, I'd have a lot more room to split. Um, my Axiom will also switch patches between the iPad Air and the iPad Mini. So I'm just going to jam a little bit on the iPad Air sound, which I did before. Switch over to the iPad Mini. Waldorf music indeed. Now, I haven't mixed and matched anything, but um, very easily I should be able to take 
the uh, Magellan synth and instead of going to session two which is my iPad mini go to session one now the same keyboard controls a Mellotron I'm now playing both iPads at the same time with two different keyboards with Arctic keys in the bottom and Mellotron in the middle and Nave on the top and the beautiful thing about main stage is that you know it's it's you can organize each patch so that I can do anything I can combine any of these in any way that I want three keyboards is a little bit much at times but um, it's a way to do it um, as far as people were asking me about a PC version of something that uh, does something like this I've yet to find anything like this in fact one of my main motivations into moving to a Mac platform was this program um, if you haven't used main stage before it's, it's really really fantastic it's like having logic or pro tools or any of these programs except without the uh, the you know the uh, digital recording system part of it and all the overhead that comes with that it also only costs about thirty dollars and you get all these sounds and all these routing abilities it's uh... it's my main rig uh, all i do when i go on a uh, show with my band in Cura is I just take my uh, 88 note keyboard, a little pad controller, and main stage, and that's everything I need. So, uh, any questions, just let me know. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.